Hey, Merry Christmas and blessed new year to everyone. Thanks for starting your year off in worship with us. Today is the ninth day of Christmas. However, our texts this morning come from the second day of Christmas, December 26th, when we celebrate in our church calendar the Feast of St. Stephen. And as we just heard, the one who was called upon to wait upon tables while the official disciples preached and taught, he ended up giving the longest sermon in the entire Bible. By the end of the sermon, however, he becomes the church's first martyr. He is stoned to death immediately as he finishes his sermon. Maybe they don't even let him finish his sermon. Now, do you think he was killed because of the content of his sermon or the length of his sermon? Anybody know? <laughs> that was a joke. Of course people love long sermons. But just to ensure that this sermon doesn't end up being too long, because I am pretty inspired by the word and by the witness of the person I'm going to talk about this morning, I've decided to preach outside. So at some point, even though I'm from Minnesota, I will get cold out here and I will not eclipse hopefully the length of St. Stephen's sermon in Acts chapter six and seven, but we'll see, all right? Anyway, in all seriousness, the word martyr can and often does appropriately refer to someone who gives their life in the process of witnessing to the faith. The word martyr in essence though, literal meaning is to be a witness. To be a martyr is to be a witness. Years ago, we had the privilege, Anakari and I, to attend the wedding of our good friends in El Salvador, Pastor Matias and Martina. And the church was packed. Bishop Gomez, the Nobel Peace Prize nominee, was preaching. And as he was affirming their relationship, recalling God's faithfulness, celebrating the way the two were perfectly made for one another, he looked Matthias and Martina in the eye and said, you are the martyrs that lived. You are the martyrs that lived. And there wasn't a dry eye in the place. There were tears of sadness for all those that were martyrs who had been killed. There was sadness over the suffering and near-death experiences that Martina and Matthias and basically everybody in that sanctuary had experienced. And there were tears of joy, celebrating that they had lived, all of them had lived, had to see that moment of joy. Today we get to celebrate a martyr who lived. South African Archbishop Desmond Tutu. He died last week on December 26th, the day of St. Stephen. Very appropriate. He was born into poverty, but would end up studying at King's College in London, became a prominent theologian, professor, Nobel Peace Prize winner, activist, author, and of course, the Archbishop of the South African Anglican Church. His leadership was instrumental and crucial in bringing an end to a devastatingly ruthless system called apartheid. Bishop Tutu has been on my radar for a long time because I got to hear him speak live at the ELCA Youth Gathering in 2001 when I was a youth minister at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Edgewater. Pilgrim sponsors an ELCA missionary from South Africa named Dr. Phil Knudsen. And the last time we was, he was here, 
we asked him about his relationship and experience working with Archbishop Tutu. And he's a pretty cerebral guy, but when we mentioned Bishop Tutu's name, Dr. Phil teared up. And I remember him saying, those were terribly hard days and those were good days. This was an extremely difficult sermon to prepare, not because of a lack of good material, but because of way too much. It quickly set in. I would never be able to do justice to the witness of Archbishop Tutu, but I will share a few thoughts this morning. Desmond Tutu was a prophet of peace. Not peace that we just muster up to project to the outside world while our heart is racked with anxiety. And not a surface peace that arises from political theater in order to get a good photo op before the next bishop or political election. Archbishop Tudu was a true, a prophet of the true and durable and Holy Spirit, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus generated peace. Let me ask you a very, very difficult question. I'm not sure a harder question has ever been asked from the pulpit. Are you ready? Raise your hand if you are sick and tired of this pandemic. I told you that was a hard question. <laughs> I mean, of course we are. Isn't, is there a bigger issue right now for us as human beings as we begin a new year? We're tired. We're frustrated. Well, do you think that Archbishop Tutu ever got sick and tired? Sick and tired of racism? Sick and tired of violence? Of apartheid? Sick of the politics, not only within his own government, of the government of his country, but within his own church? I know he did, but he kept going back to the source. He kept looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of his faith and our faith, who is willing to suffer for the greater good. And he kept listening to the source, which is the word of God and receiving waves and waves of the Holy Spirit. And today he is a prophet of peace that is here to inspire us. And that's the trap when we talk about people like Archbishop Tutu or uh, Mother Teresa. We rightly admire them. We raise them up as examples of faith, but the Mother Teresas and the Archbishop Tutus of the world do not want us to admire them only. They have been placed in our lives and in the world for the times that they are, not that we could only we would only admire them, but that we would be inspired by them to realize, just like is it People Magazine, they're just like us. They're human beings. They get frustrated. They get angry. They get tired. They get sick. And these saints would want us to learn from them, and maybe not ever become as famous as them, but to embody the peace that they received from our same Lord and Savior and Liberator, Jesus Christ, and that flowing Holy Spirit. So yes, Bishop Tutu got tired and frustrated. He had a million moments where he was threatened by burnout and despair. He writes about them in his book. Not every one of his stories and experiences ended well. But just like St. Stephen, he knew the story. He knew the covenant of God's love and of mercy, God's covenant of law and justice. And coupling God's justice with God's reconciliation, he was an instrument of God's peace. 
So here are some quotes that will inspire you and will embody the peace, hope, and love that can inspire us in 2022. Because with everything going on, the good news this morning, with the birth of the Christ child on the second Sunday of Christmas, the good news is that peace is accessible and can be made real in us and in the world. For our newborn king is the prince of peace. Jesus gave his life on the cross, showing us that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus rose from the dead on the third day, proving that we don't have to be afraid of death. So removing every obstacle between us and a life of to living and sowing peace. We celebrate Christmas in Archbishop Tutu today. As I said earlier, the peace of the gospel is not a cheap peace. It is not a surface peace. It is a peace that forces us to grapple with the sins within us and the principalities and powers of this world. Perhaps Tutu's most famous quote is, if you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. If an elephant has its foot on the tail of a mouse, and you say that you are neutral, the mouse will not appreciate your neutrality. <laughs> How have we been guilty of neutrality in the face of injustice? That's an important question as we begin 2022. As the pandemic has taught us Though we're all in the same storm, we are not all in the same boat. And one of the lessons of this pandemic can be to truly see our need for a greater sense of interconnectedness and compassion and to begin to close the gaps of inequity in our world. How might we find more courage to be present in solidarity with those who are suffering. Tutu did have a compelling working philosophy when it came to his work. The theology of Ubuntu. I am because you are. Here's a clip of the Archbishop explaining his theology with a late night talk show host with his hallmark sense of humor. Is that the only way to freedom, is, is forgiveness? I, I, I remember hearing something about uh, the Dalai Lama talking about he, he felt he was in danger with the Chinese because he felt himself losing compassion for them, which I didn't really understand at the time, but it sounds a little bit yes. like what you're saying. The, the, the thing is that you and I and all of us, even when we don't accept it, I mean, or understand, it is that God created us in such a way that I can't be human on my own. I wouldn't know how to walk as a human being. I wouldn't know how to think. I wouldn't know how to speak. I wouldn't know how to be a human being except through learning from other human beings. And so our humanity is bound up with one another's. But human human beings are incredible. Yeah. I mean, you are incredible. Oh, no, stop. Uh, I, but what I, I was going to... The second thing. Shh. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you're right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you see, we saw it in South Africa. If you, if you carry out a policy that dehumanizes others, yeah. in the process... You are dehumanized, right? You know, and 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 so you understand now. You understand how others can say, "In order for me to be me, I want to forgive you." Because have you discovered when you don't forgive, yeah, 
frequently you feel it in your tum tum. Yeah, 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 you do. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And so I always thought I was told that resentment was like drinking poison and then expecting someone else to die. You know that it has that. Oh, that. that's that's a beautiful. Thank you very much. It's not mine. Yeah. <laughs> It is this sense of interconnectedness that compelled him to be the world's most famous proponent of forgiveness. Without forgiveness, Tutu famously said, there is no future. Who is God leading and empowering you to forgive as we enter 2000? 22. As I close, I'd like to point out that for me, what is the biggest marvel of Archbishop Tutu? I love that the witness of St. Stephen today in the book of Acts mentions a certain word over and over again. He was full of the Holy Spirit and he spoke with great wisdom. Because the Holy Spirit does give us the gift of wisdom. And in that wisdom and that power of the Holy Spirit, Tutu was simultaneously able to love and forgive his oppressors and hold them accountable to become better, more compassionate, more just, more reflective more faithful. Let me repeat that. Tutu was simultaneously able to love and forgive his oppressors while holding them accountable. Let it be so with us. It's hard work, it's good work. Let the love of Jesus sink into our hearts. Let the forgiveness of Jesus remind us that our sins, as it says in Isaiah, Though they be as scarlet, they will be as white as snow. We have a brand new start, despite everything going on. Let us receive that new start that does not come from our circumstances, but that comes from the living God and the Holy Spirit. And when frustrations and fears come, because they will, remember this story. In 1984, after a community containing 600 households they were trying to save was completely displaced and then destroyed by the apartheid government. In 1984, Tutu was talking with his daughter. He came home after it all went down and he said to her, why do we even try? What we're doing, it is just a drop in the bucket. Yes, Daddy, she replied, but there's always one final drop that makes the bucket overflow. Let us be willing to let the flow of the Holy Spirit fill our hearts with peace this year so that we can drip, drip, drip with the power and wisdom of God. Merry Christmas. Show compassion when you show caring, when you show love to others, do things for others. In a wonderful way, you have a, a deep joy that you can get in no other way. You suddenly feel a warm glow uh, in your heart because you have, in fact, wiped the tears from the eyes of another. He loved. He laughed. He cried. He forgave.